So my 97 Chevy K1500 truck hasn't been running very good. So I swapped the uh, fuel filter and the spark plugs. It ran good for a couple of days and now it's still running poorly. So today we're swapping out the fuel tank, which includes a new fuel pump. Here's a quick list of all the products I used to make this repair happen. Pause as needed and write down. This video is gonna be really helpful to those of you who went from a standard to a step side box as the box is shorter. And so I had to order a variety of different tubes, etc., to make it happen. Next, we'll use a pick tool and a flathead screwdriver to remove the fuel filler neck hoses. We'll remove this and then we'll remove the top one. So this hose is now removed. Okay, now that's removed and I just have it hanging on the step side bed. So we're on the rear of the tank. I'm going to use a 15 millimeter socket with an extension to remove this bolt that holds the strap. It's binding really bad, so I'm going to put some PB blaster on. Okay, bracket is off. Time to support the tank with a cardboard box or whatever I can find. Five gallon pail should suffice. Now the other side of that same strap, we'll just wiggle it out of its hole. As you can see, I had to bend the strap because I'm not jacked up. And then I could twist it 90 degrees so I could get it out of the notch, like so. Now for the front bracket on the frame there's four mounting nuts we'll remove these oh, I'm a pretty strong guy I can bench over 300 pounds the top two nuts came off easy bottom ones uh, I gave it all I had and nothing budged so uh, PB blaster and I'll wait 10 minutes try again I don't have an impact wrench so I found a steel tube that fit over the end of my ratchet it gave me the leverage to break these two free after loosening these bottom two bolts I needed a second five gallon bucket under the tank for extra support. Next I'll take a pry bar, push that tank to the right passenger side. Um, I'm going to use the same steel bar that I used as leverage to, uh, to get these bolts to come out of the frame, all four of them. Remove the left side nut bracket. So when I remove that left side nut bracket it snapped completely off immediately. No big deal because the new strap in question comes with the bolt and a new nut. Next, we'll remove the wiring harness connector. I uh, just want to make a point, the uh, connector to the right comes new with the tank, so if it's corroded, who cares? The connector in the left is what we're worried about. Both connectors look good, no corrosion. The connector should have been attached to the frame, but it was not. We'll attach it later to the frame with a zip tie. Higher up, you can see my fingers are on the ground wire. It's bolted onto the frame with a 13 millimeter nut. We're gonna remove that now. The 13 millimeter nut is so rusted, the wrench just twists right out. So we're gonna try a vice grip. After a few turns with the vice grip, I was able to get it out with the ratchet. Next, we have to remove these two fuel lines. Okay, the front bracket that mounts the strap in is actually held together, not by pop rivets, but by two nuts. So we'll take those off now. Those two nuts were quite rusty. I had to use a 7 16th socket to get those to turn. They're not coming all the way off, they just kind of spin, so uh, we'll deal with that after we get the tank out. All right, next to remove these two fuel lines, I'm gonna have to lower this tank, so I'm gonna have to find a different uh, support system, a little shorter than these uh, five gallon buckets. All right, here's the new fuel pump. The two connectors I'm worried about for the fuel line under the truck are so rusty. So the two fuel lines underneath the truck are extremely rusty. Um, and I have a feeling this nut and this nut are fused to this line. So, and I'm also worried about this side nut, extremely corroded and rusty. So I don't think I'm going to get them off. And uh, since the new fuel pump has a good line towards the tank, um, I'm just going to save a bunch of time and... Take a tin snips and cut both these lines. And then there's also a fourth line. I need to figure out what that is for. Here's the tin snips I will use. So I hopped under my truck again. So this, these two lines are for the fuel. Uh, this line goes to the uh, vent hose on my filler neck. And then this goes to the hose that is completely uh, disconnected underneath my truck to anything. So this is the one I have to figure out what to do with. 
Next, I'm going to kick out these five gallon buckets and lower them onto these flower pots just to lower the tank by about six inches. Okay, next we need to label we need to label this front facing tube with the with the label called front and the back one called rear. So I can't lower the tank because it hits the drive shaft. I'm gonna have to twist it vertically to get it to lower, which is gonna be kind of difficult by myself. So I'm gonna replace the uh, five gallon tank on the rear end and then try and lower it onto the flower pot. I have the lower object supporting the tank in the back higher in the front. Now I'm going to kick the front out and put another flower pot next to it. Okay, as you can see, I've done that and I was able to uh, rip that bracket out, which helped me lower the tank. All right, both lines have been cut with the tin snips. Next, I'm going to remove these planter pots, put the tank on the ground and try and pull it out from under the truck. We'll see if I need a jack to get it out. As you can see, the gas tank pulled out just fine without a jack probably because I have a three inch lift. The tank's pretty heavy, so I'm gonna set it on top of my brand new creeper and scratch it all up and wheel it over to compare the other one. All right, comparing the two, they look identical, old and new. Um, later on, I'm gonna transfer some of these hoses. I got some new ones and uh, you can see the front bracket popped right off after I got it out from another truck. Uh, but for now, I wanna, these two fuel lines that I cut, I wanna make sure I can get the, this end piece off so I, the new one will fit in. Okay, the ends are coming off. This one either, so I put some PB Blaster in there. I'll try again in 10 minutes. There's a ton of rust above that gas tank. I'm gonna take a hammer and pound that rust out and then spray some anti-rust spray on there, whatever I have on hand. All right, I pounded out some of that rust with a hammer and a chisel. Now I'm gonna put some fluid film black over the area where the tank will cover up. Okay, I got the front and back of that beam covered in fluid film and some other rusty spots. Uh, while I have access to this area, I'm taking advantage of it. While the nuts on the fuel lines are soaking in PB Blaster degreaser for a third application, they are really seized up. Now we're gonna get the old strap removed from the bracket and then sand up the edges. Uh, you can see you need a flat screwdriver, that's why they were spinning out. Take a look at this old tank. I'm gonna empty out the old gas and see what kind of crap comes out of the bottom of it, which would explain why my performance is so bad. Next, I'm going to put in the new fuel pump on the new tank and line up the gasket. Okay, we gotta get the rubber gasket on the bottom of this. Next, we need to make sure all of our tubing is facing the fuel fill neck line opening. And now if you zoom in on the top, you can see uh, it's not completely straight. It's at a, just a slight angle uh, and it can't move because there's a notch there and a notch there. And we want to make sure if you get a top down view that rubber gasket you should not be able to see it on the outside edges if it is it's not centered properly okay now the lock ring needs to go over the top through the electric over the tubing these, these tabs go up Just, uh, I think it's on backwards. I think that was wrong. That can't be right. I'm just gonna see what it looks like the other way. It definitely goes tab up. But I don't know if they made an improvement in design or what, but the way I understood is this tap should have been on this side, and you tap it, and the tab goes underneath this lip right here, 
that little bubble lip. But from the way I see, you just slide. Like so. It ain't gonna move any farther because of this notch. So this might be an improvement in design over the last video I watched because and I'll go back and rewatch it, but I swear he pounded this tip until it disappeared underneath this piece of metal here in that little bubble. And that's what locked it. But this looks like an improvement in design. I mean, this tank, the, the old tank is 25 years old. So this one looks like it's just a change in design. I mean, I flipped it around and it, Definitely won't go on that way. And this way is, it's, I mean, it's locked. Now it loosens real easy to the left. I mean, not easy, but. Um, anyway, I think that's in place. So give it a wiggle. It does not wiggle. So I think we are good. The fuel pump is installed. All right. It's locked into position. So the tube I want to address now is this one. Okay, here's the part in the video where we do a fast forward into the future. Um, this is a couple of days after all my repairs were done. And me and my son realized there was some gas vapor coming from the tank. Um, actually coming into the cab a little bit. Um, no leaks. So I went back, reviewed everything, and realized my uh, locking nut um, for the fuel pump wasn't completely engaged as I had suspected when I rewatched my video, but uh, I'll show you what I did and we should be good to go. Surprisingly, I was able to fix this without pulling the whole tank. It took me like, literally it took me 15 minutes to fix it. Um, so just take off those four bolts on the side frame. Uh, rear strap, the bolt on the other end to the right, take it out. The large and the small tube going into the filler neck. Just release the clamps on those, pull them out. Brace the rear with a five gallon pail and the front with a five gallon pail. And now the fun part. So on the right side of the vehicle underneath, there's a gap between the exhaust and the tank and the rear, you can slide a real big light to see what you're doing in there. And then believe it or not, um, if you get on a creeper, if you get on a creeper, this gap between the exhaust and the frame, you can actually, if you're a short guy like me, you can actually slide your whole body up in here so your head touches the top of the bed, bottom of the bed. And then uh, take a long screwdriver and a hammer. And where I was screwing up is I was trying to hammer, I was trying to tap the hammer with, I was trying to tap this into place using these little clamps on the outer rim, but I was supposed to do the inner rim. And as soon as I, there's like three notches on that circle. As soon as I started tapping the inner notch, that the tab that goes up it spun like butter so it took like five six taps and then it was completely sealed so now the uh, order issue should be gone um, and I just have to um, reattach that bolt reattach the bolts to the frame reattach those two f tubes to the filler neck and then we should be good to go and this is the nasty one we need to mimic there's a one clamp two clamps Three clamps, four clamps, um, section of tube, a shorter section of tube, and then a, a non-plastic uh, metal tube in the middle. So let's see if what I bought on mine will work. First section of tube looks the same length. This uh, metal tube looks the same 
length. Um, it's not because I put a step side box on and I had to cut it in half. I may have to do that again because the step side box isn't as wide as the standard. Okay, so the old tube was only about an inch and a half onto the shaft. Um, the new one, I went three inches onto the shaft. Just because of the tube issue, I'm hoping I don't have to cut that. I'm gonna clamp it now. Okay, I have it tightened down enough. Um, not so tight that the, the plastic is gonna break um, or the tip of the tube is gonna um, crush. And not on the very, very edge. So there's like a quarter inch. Okay, you can see um, that's an inch. Um, that is almost three inches. So I gained uh, two inches. Now, here's the old tube. The old tube ends about there. So I got maybe uh, four or five extra inches there. So I have two to three inches to, to work with. Um, this tube, if I have to, when I um, attach it back up to the fuel filler neck, I'll just cut off the very, very tip. And uh, hopefully I don't have to cut this. Okay, that clamp is on. As you can see, the old uh, filler tube is shorter than the new one in the kit I got. Um, now the new kit I got came with a longer filler neck um, that's made out of metal. So on the old assembly, I have a chunk of metal there that will probably just be omitted from the equation. Clamp is tightened on. Now there's some very unique bends to this. So whether or not I have it on on the right twist and even if I have the right end attached, I'm not sure yet. Okay, I took a uh, rust brush on my drill and got this contact end um, brushed up real good where it goes into the frame. And then I took a hammer and wailed on it to get all these big chunks of rust off of it. And then I will spray it with some rust protectant here shortly. Okay, I had a friend, Jason, come out and help me with the inability to remove the end off of these fuel lines, even after I cut them. So, basically, I feel bad for making them come out to do this, but uh, it's the pickle jar trick. Um, you whack the corner of the nut, and then it just spins out like butter. Same trick with that one, you just took a hammer on all four ends, and then it just spun right out. I'll have to go find a new set of nuts and bolts for this because they're seized up. So I'm gonna grind these off with a grinder next. Okay, with the grinder, I got those removed. We're off to the parts store to get a new set of nuts and bolts, something low profile so it won't um, butt up against the tank. The, uh, the kit did not come with a new rubber sleeve. Um, there's two of them, one there, one there. Um, I'm gonna add them to the new tank. I might even put some uh, duct tape underneath it for extra support. We don't want those straps to um, puncture the tank over time. Okay, I got a layer of duct tape underneath these uh, for a little extra protection because they're really old and deteriorated. I'm just gonna take a hot glue gun and put a little glue under there. Just basically when I install it, I don't want that slipping around, I mean falling off. All right, those have been hot glued in. Now we're gonna attach the strap and the bracket while it's on the floor. Uh, there was two nuts right there I had to grind off. I went down to Ace Hardware and I got a new set of bolts and nuts. All right, new nuts and washers attached. Okay, I got the new bracket pushed as far as I can underneath. And then the strap is wrapped around into place. Unfortunately, can't get that last bend. So I kind of made a mark here 
on this made in Taiwan annoying sticker. Um, I'm gonna pull this clamp out and bend it around the Taiwan section. And then I can get this bolt into that hole. Okay, I just took that corner on a rock outside the house and bent it and got the nut in the hole and the bolt started. Uh, for now, it's you just go loose. We don't go full tight. So that bracket attaches to the frame and we're going to scrub some of the rust off so it has a nice flush fit. From a previous project, uh, this area has been scrubbed of rust and treated. So no need to do that for this. All right, I've got the new tank on the creeper. Now we'll put it under the truck. Now we'll just take off the end that we clipped. Same here. Okay, I have the new tank supported with two five gallon buckets. And we're gonna attach the ground wire and the electrical wire. Okay, the ground wire has been attached to the top of the frame. All right, I got the electrical connector uh, reattached. Now I'm gonna attach it into the frame with a zip tie. Okay, probably the trickiest part of this whole repair is you need a, for the fuel lines, you need a, a wrench on the bottom and then a wrench on top to twist and tighten it. It's very cramped in here, but now that it's a lot easier with new nuts from the new fuel pump. Okay, you can see I have the two fuel lines attached. I labeled them for front and rear so I didn't get them mixed. I tightened them up as much as I could. So it's a two wrench job. Um, one wrench here is bigger. You put it on and then angle it down. And then the top one is smaller. And then you can tighten it that way and you need 17 and 18 millimeter wrenches. So the fourth line is just a vent line. Um, I'm gonna pull the old one off and probably cut off the tip because it's really corroded. Okay, this tube was very corroded. I cut the tip off and added a clamp. We're going to attach it now. I didn't like how the fuel line was underneath the bracket, so I put it above the bracket and uh, zip tied it. I also put a zip tie around the uh, fuel lines and the uh, vent hose. All right, I got the fuel fill line attached. Um, there's quite a few bends to that hose, and um, there's a heck of an angle to get up and outside of the step side bed. So this last part is gonna be complicated and a lot of messing around. Okay, next we're gonna attach the rear bracket with the nut we saved, uh, which is adhered to this bolt. Remember, uh, it's got a curve. Um, when you put it in there underneath, the curve needs to go down. As you can see, I've got that back attached into the frame. Uh, I had it in backwards because my uh, 90 degree tip wasn't pointed down. Um, takes a bit of finagling to get that in the hole, um, but it'll eventually go. And then uh, kind of start to bend this metal. You gotta get it on the left side of the drive shaft. Um, I have a, quite a ways to go now, so I'm gonna have to push this tank way to the left and angle that at a 90 degree straight up. Next, put the bracket back in through the frame and Snug these nuts up, not super tight, but um, get them flush. Okay, I got that in, it's pretty tight. Um, try and wiggle the tank, you can't. The front still wiggles, but that's because I haven't tightened the bolts on the frame. So let me do that now. And recheck for tightness. All right, I was able to find a new piece of plastic. Um, you can see, you can see this one is shot. I went down to Ace and I got a new bolts, uh, new brackets, three here and then 
three here. These were seized up. I had to drill them out. Um, here's one of the new ones. I went with, uh, went with the Phillips instead of my unfavorite Torx. Here's a piece I ripped out of the old system. Uh, it never really fit right. Uh, this came with a kit. I don't think I'm going to end up using it. I'll double check here, but I have a shorter one that I bought in another kit. That seems like it'll fit perfect in this step side box. So you can see I have that shorty in there. Um, once I shove it up vertical, um, I'm hoping this little shorty tube I have will uh, let me connect from here to here. There's a shorty tube. That's like the only old piece I'm keeping from the old system. Uh, be careful when you're messing around down here. I had that opening. I had this completely open and a bunch of rust fell in there so I had to bend it down and tap it out. Okay, one point I wanted to make when you put this back into the frame, um, there's a wiring harness on your ear. I um, kind of pull it to the edge of the lip. Um, if you have it all the way flush inside the frame, this bracket can pinch on this little bit, this wiring harness. This is the clamp that goes behind here. Um, that's broken off. I don't really need it for support, but I'm gonna, I think the nut head or the, this Phillips end is big enough that it will clamp over the sheet metal and make it a little sturdier. All right, it's starting to look good. I'm about an inch short of reaching the top and I have a little bit of metal to work with here, so I'm going to loosen this clamp and then uh, pull the pull the filler neck out about an inch. All right, time to loosen these four bolts again. We are about in half to one inch short, and I can pull that filler neck tube off of the tank by about an inch to get my inch. Fortunately, I have to pull this out of the frame again. Okay, you can see I have it a little bit apart from the tank now and I had to completely change the position of my clamp and I had to use a shorty flat screwdriver because I had to try and access it from the top of the frame so hopefully this is the right combination of length and direction of the tube all right since I'm once again doing this project by myself I had to remove these bolts and attach that cover from underneath the vehicle and I'll try and attach those three bolts first. Okay, I absolutely needed a helper to get this part done. Thanks, Connor. No problem. I don't want to be in the camera. Turd. Um, we got these three in. I had to reuse the two old ones because uh, Ace gave me ones that didn't fit. Um, top one doesn't need it. Let's see if the tank uh, cap fits on. Okay, that went on. That's so satisfying back under for this little tubey. All right, I'm gonna have to go back to this shorty. I'm taking that long guy out. Um, it's getting late and it's basically three inches too long. Twice as long. All right, it's in. Everything has been stretched to its limits. I prefer a little bit more hose on metal, but there was enough to clamp in all the spots. So now I'm just going to tighten up the straps, the frame side bolts, get some gas, maybe five gallons of gas, and start this baby up. Stupid design on this five gallon gas tank. That hose is way too short, so I ended up spilling a little bit. Other than that, now we're going to go under the truck and see if anything is leaking from the fill process. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if she starts up. No leaks, time for a test drive. Test drive seemed a lot better. Time will tell. Okay, here's what the old fuel filter looks like. The top rim is completely rusted out and the bottom uh, filter pad is solid black, full of debris. I don't know if you can see that very good, but you see all that black sediment on the bottom of the tank? It's no good. All right, so the first test drive after the repairs were done, um, the first quarter mile was just a tad bit choppy, but then the next five miles after that was smooth. Even the problem I had where at idle it would 
shake and cut out like every eight seconds is gone as well. So we should be good to go.